On the third module, the next topic we're going to cover is discounts. Before understanding the concepts of discounts, we need to try to figure out and learn the formulae. The first formula we'll be looking at is cost price plus profit or minus loss is equal to mark price or list price. And the same list price or mark price will go and be utilized in the second formula. So the second formula is the same mark or list price minus discount is equal to selling price. Two things we need to remember are that the profit or loss, the percentage or whatever is given is always calculated on the cost price. Okay. So when you add the profit margin to the cost price is what you get your list price as. And the second thing we need to remember is that the discount is always on the list price. So I've represented it by an arrow so you can understand it better. So now we're going to understand the concept of how a profit margin is set. So when a manufacturer is producing any good or any item, he'll obviously incur a lot of production costs or transportation costs or whatever it is. When he's incurring all these costs, it obviously he will have to add a profit margin to his cost in order to incur a little bit of profit for him to sustain in the market. So when he's doing that, any cost price that he has, for example, if a piece of furniture is manufactured, the production cost is probably 100 rupees. So when you add a profit margin of 10% or whatever percent you're adding to it, the marked price or the list price is what you're selling it to the retailers for. So the retailer will buy it from the manufacturer at a profit percentage. So when he's buying it, the manufacturer is happy with the profit he receives. So this is called the marked or the list price. Next, in your shop, when a customer approaches a retailer, there are certain cases where during festivals or if he's a regular customer, they want the customer to become a habitual customer. In those cases, the uh, retailer at his discretion will offer a cash or a trade discount to the customers. So hence, from the mark price or list price, a certain percentage of discount is deducted from it and final price that the customer is paying is called the selling price. The first sum we're going to be solving says determine the trade discount amount and the net price for the following. The first product given is a computer, the list price of which is given as $1,200 and the trade discount rate as 30%. It's very evident from the question that we need to use the second formula in order to find the net price and the trade discount amount. So this formula goes as follows, LP, that is list price, minus discount is equal to net price or selling price. According to the question, list price is given as $1,200. So I directly write it under list price as $1,200. Discount rate is given as 30%. So 30%, I have already mentioned that discount should always be on the list price. So 30% of $1,200 is equal to net price. As you solve it, you get $1,200 minus 30% of 1,200 is 360. And therefore, you get your net price to be $840. Since they're specifically, specifically asked for the trade discount amount in the question, I suggest that you write trade discount as $360 as well. We're going to move on to the second question. Moving on to the second part of the question, they've asked you to find the trade discount amount for the copy machine and uh, net price for the copy machine. List price for the machine has been given as $700. So I directly write $700 under list price. We're utilizing the same formula. Discount is given as 25%. So what I'm supposed to do is 25% of your list price because discount is always calculated on list price. So 25% of list price, that is 700, will give you the net price. So when I solve it further, you get $700 minus rupees, 25% of 700 is 175. Therefore, your net price is equal to $525 and your discount is equal to $175. This is the end of the second question. 
Moving on to the third question. Jane's Variety Store places a $75 order for candy. If the store receives a 35% discount from the candy wholesaler, what is the net price that the Variety Store will pay to the wholesaler? So this is exactly like the first question. So if you look at the question, the list price is given as $75 and the discount rate is given at 35% on the list price. So the first thing you do is to utilize the second formula by writing it down. So list price minus discount is equal to net price. And remember the discount is always on the list price. So substituting it, you get $75 minus 35% on the list price is equal to the net price. Solving it, you get 75 minus 26.25 is equal to net price. Therefore, your net price is equal to 48 dollars and 75 cents. Moving on to the fifth question. For the last 15 years, Tina has been receiving a 20 slash 15 slash 5 series discount. Find the equivalent single discount rate. Before understanding how to calculate an equivalent single discount rate, we're going to try to understand why it is availed by the customer. Now, for example, if I am a regular customer in a particular, at a particular store and they're having a season sale or a flat 30% discount sale, so what I go is I purchase a product. Sometimes these products are close to their expiry dates or some of them are not, very, not in their best condition and some of them have defects. So in this scenario, I'm already getting a 30% flat discount rate and on these kind of products that have a particular specif uh, specification to it, I get a further discount on it. So if I'm getting a 30% flat discount and the product is close to its expiry date, I get a 10% further discount. So instead of tediously calculating further discounts, because sometimes there are cases where there are more than three discounts that a customer can avail. So in this case, there's a formula, simple formula of calculating a single discount rate that I directly calculate on the list price. So the next thing you do, formula wise, it's one minus, in brackets, one minus D, discount one, one minus discount two, and one minus discount, uh, discount three, and so on. In this question, there are only three discounts. So this formula is sufficient. So Tina is getting a 20 slash 15 slash 5 discount rate. So in order to find the single equivalent discount rate, what you do is you calculate. So 1 minus discount is 0 0.20. For 15 is 1 minus 0 0.15. And for 5 is 1 minus 0 0.05. This is the percentage, so I divide it by 100 since it's a percentage form to find it in decimal form. So when I do this, I calculate it and go ahead. So it will be 1 minus 0 0.80, sorry. 1 minus 0 0.20 is 0 0.80. Into 1 minus 0 0.15 is 0 0.85. And 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0 0.95. When I multiply this, I get 1 minus 0 0.646. So the answer will be 0 0.354. Since they've asked you for a discount rate, you obviously have to convert it into percentage form. So 0 0.354 into 100 will give you the rate as... 35.4%. So when, if the list price is given in the question, Tina can directly calculate 35.4% 35, 35 on the list price and directly get her selling price. Moving on to the seventh question, it says a manufacturer can cover his cost and make a reasonable profit if he sells an article for $63.70. At what price should the article be listed so that a discount of 30% can be allowed? So this is again utilization of the second formula and they've given directly that the selling price of the article is $63.70. They've given you a discount rate of 
30%. The goal is to find the list price. So now what you need to do is assume the list price to be X because no other information is given. So you write, let the list price of the article be X, okay? So the next step you do, the formula goes as follows. List price minus discount is equal to selling price, okay? So list price according to the question is X and discount is 30%. Now again, let us remember that the list price is always calculated on, sorry, the discount is always calculated on the list price. So when I check it here, 30% of X is equal to 63.70. It is easier to solve and substitute in the formula if we first list out all the information given in the question. So X minus 30 X by 100 is equal to 63.70. First thing you do is take the LCM as 100. So 100x minus 30x is equal to 63.70. I take the 100 that side. 100x minus 30x is 70x. 70x divided by 100 is equal to 63.70. Therefore, x is equal to 63.70 into 100 divided by 70. Therefore, X is equal to $91. Please ensure that you write the list price of the article is $91. You've gotten the list price is $91. You can verify your answer by deducting 30% of 91 and checking if you get a 63.70 as a selling price. Moving on to the eighth question. You buy goods with a list price of $800. You return goods that are de defective, having a list price of $50. You are entitled to a trade discount of 20% and the seller paid $20 in freight on your behalf and added the amount to the invoice. You are offered a 4% cash discount and if you pay the invoice within 15 days, what is the net amount you should pay the supplier if you make payment within the discount period? So before understanding the question, we need to first learn the fundamentals of trade discount and cash discount. So trade discount is any discount that is not recorded in the books of accounts, while cash discount is something that is recorded. So why is trade discount allowed and why is cash discount also offered? So now what happens is trade discount is something that a manufacturer gives to the retailer because he's buying goods in bulk. And now cash discount is availed by the customer if he pays the money in cash within a certain number of days. So this is the difference between cash and trade discount. Now what you need to do, they've given you the list price of the goods as $800. The first thing you need to do is to deduct the amount of the defective goods. As I've already mentioned, obviously goods that are not in the right condition should not be sold. So you deduct goods worth $50. So therefore you end up having goods that of the list price of $750. Next they've mentioned that the seller paid $20 of freight on your behalf. Obviously to your cost of production, you need to add $20 of freight. So your final list price is $770. The next thing you need to do is to first deduct trade discount and then again deduct cash discount. So even if you notice the hierarchy goes as manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer and customer. So obviously when the wholesaler is buying goods in bulk, a trade discount is offered. So you need to calculate trade discount first and only then calculate cash discount. So the first step would be $770 minus They've given you a trade discount of 20%. So 20% on 770 because discount is always on the list price. So when I calculate on 770, I get a new selling price of 616. Okay. Moving on, when the retailer or the wholesaler sells it to the customer, he offers them a 4% uh, cash discount if the customer pays all the money or purchases the product within 15 days. So then, from 616, I deduct a 4% cash discount. 
cash discount. Again, this 4% is calculated on the 616 amount. So it'll be 4% on 616. So your final net price will be 591.36. So the final customer has to pay 591.36. Moving on to the ninth question. Ninth question goes as follows. A customer gets a discount of rupees 120 on an article if a discount of 15% is allowed. Find the marked price and the selling price of the article. So now in this question, they haven't given you anything regarding the list price. So you start off by assuming the list price to be X. It's better to write down whatever you have in the question before moving on and solving it. So they've given you discount percentage as 15% and the discount as rupees 120. So the smart thing to do would be to directly find the amount of discount. So they've given you a discount. So discount is normally discount percentage on the list price. So you can find the list price by directly substituting it. So 120 rupees is equal to 15% of X because list price is assumed to be X. So when you do this, 120 into 100 divided by 15 is equal to X. You get your X or your list price as rupees 800. So the next thing to do would be to find the selling price. Selling price is LP minus discount. Okay? LP is directly given. We just found it out as 800. Discount is given in the question as 120. So you do 800 minus 120. You get your final selling price as 680. So the question has been very ambiguous about the list price. So what you do is they're giving you a 15% discount and a 120 rupees discount. So the smart thing to do would be to use this, these two information to find the list price because nothing else has been given. So you write discount on list price is 15% on X that you've assumed to be X. Discount is 120 rupees. So you directly when you find X, you get it as 800 rupees. From 800, you deduct the 120 rupees discount that they've given. Or you can also do 800 minus 15%. You'll get your answer as 680 rupees as a selling price.